Hello, it's Ren Presents Time. I am your host, Ren, and today we continue with the third turn of the Shadow Tech Goddess, Stenabel. Chapter 12, Ambush. Last week, our heroine Stenabel found herself captured by the captain of the George Parr. She was shackled to a chair on deck two and was interrogated quite roughly by his first officer, Lieutenant Rem Deckard. Charging to her defense was Zaffin warlord Rodrigo Bergen, who defended her, did not allow Rem Deckard to put a beat down on her, treated her with a fair amount of kindness, discovered that she is in fact a Kadar domain, and wanted to brand her with his chastity key, making him, or making her, I should say, his eternal consort. Stanabel took exception, managed to pick the lock of the chair she was being bound in, got free. Conveniently, all of her kit had been brought into the room, so she reacquired her vuncula, she reacquired her HRN, and the Unimind. All these things are quite important and managed to escape Deck 2 with Melazar of Caroline in tow before Captain Duval had the deck V-traxed with deadly gas. Also, while all this hootenanny was in progress, Melazar of Caroline and her demented ravings drew a complete map to camera, which is the info both Stenabel and the bad guys crave. Rodrigo Bergen dismissed her scribblings as just that, the scribblings of a woman who's kept perpetually insensate on various drugs. But Captain Duval, being a ship's captain, saw the chart for what it was, took it from her, and discovered that the map to camera has already been deciphered. So, this week we will continue with Chapter 12, Ambush, and we are coming to the end here. We only got a few chapters left, and then we are done. It should ratchet up to an unbearable pace right now as we plummet to the end of the book. As I said before, this is by far my shortest book. This is only 50, 60 thousand words. My books usually clock in around 130, 140 thousand words. Oh, much larger books. Like I say, I write until I'm done and I was done. This is a pretty simple story when you get right down to it. When you strip away all the bullshit, it is just a very basic plot. But there's a a lot of trappings, a lot of other things going on, which makes it significant, at least in my opinion. And for your consideration in this chapter, a la Rod Serling, think about the types of villains we have in this story. We have the brusque villain, the one with the fists ready to throw the hell down. And then you have the more taciturn, cerebral ones, the ones who are slippery and even though you might catch them red-handed doing bad things they talk their way out of trouble we'll see what we have here in this chapter right now so let's begin immediately chapter 12 ambush Hiding in the tube, Stenabel moved Melazar along until she thought it safe to pause a moment deep in deck six. She took inventory of her things. She had her vuncula, which was a blessing, and her marzible daggers, which they hadn't detected. She had most of her holy stones and most of her arcane kit, which were still in their pockets. She slapped her HRN pockets in a mild panic. There was the Unimind. She was relieved. Her Grenville 40 was missing. No matter, she rarely used it anyways. Of course, her brown holy stone was gone, lost in the hold in the battle with the punts. All the while she was going through her things, Melazar was restless and rather difficult to handle. Drugged and sluggish, she pawed at her, trying to get at her wrists. Whenever she did manage to touch them, the surge of pleasure her touch created was quite astounding. 
Even more astounding was the image that flashed through her mind. Gwen. Gwen touching her. She loved her as a man. So why not as a woman? Why not? They couldn't stay in the tube for long. Duval and Rem Deckard would send armed crawlers after them, though the size of the ship would shelter them temporarily. Her Serocone information told her that the safest place to hide on the ship would be in the ship's tailoring office on Deck 7, which was not heavily scanned, cameraed, or traveled. Dragging Melazar along, which was becoming increasingly difficult, they made their way to the tailoring office. Melazar was grabby and childlike, seemingly one to play fight, and got her into a headlock with her size and weight, it was wrenchingly tight. Stenabel moved her along as best she could. There was the tailoring office. Faded into the shadows, Stenabel went first. The office was locked and apparently disused. The chastity key on Melazar's neck was proving to be inconvenient and the lock would not budge. Instead, Stenabel located an air vent and they went in. Inside, she found the tiny office empty. She returned to the tube and dragged Melazar in, seating her in a corner. She seemed unsettled and rank. Perhaps she missed Bergen's presence. He had demonstrated a fair amount of tenderness towards her. Stenabel tried to get her to draw another map to camera as she had done earlier, but she was unresponsive and uninterested in anything but wrestling. Stenabel gave her a few items from her HRN to play with and that seemed to calm her a little. Outside, she could hear the occasional passing of crew and once she thought she smelled the acid perfume of Shadow Tech. She had to know what was happening on the bridge, and she had to figure out a way off the ship. Stenabel found a comm node and decided to risk connecting the Unimind. She had to have information. She got the Unimind out and deployed it. Despite Rem Deckard having heated it up to cherry red, it still worked as normal. Masterfully, it hacked into the ship's comm node. Information flowed in. A cone of sound opened. Lots of chatter, many voices, gruff k voices, some spoiling for her hide, along with more subdued regulars trying to run the ship. She listened carefully and sorted out the ones she thought most important. Duval. They must be still using the tubes. Get crawlers. Deploy in deck three forward and scout aft, deck by deck. Deckard. When they are found, Shoot to kill. Duval. Countermanded. We've covered this ground before, Lieutenant. Neither is to be killed. The Caroline Tropis is to be returned to Bergen, and the Esther is to be stripped of her weapons, branded, drugged, and left in my charge. After we capture the Zaffin ship, we shall make sail for Bus Stoke, provision up, and then get underway for Camera. I am convinced this chart is good. I am eager to put sail to the lead. Calm. Sir, our target vessel has vanished. It seems to have been a sensor image implanted into our main deck. Sensor image? Implanted? Stenabel wondered if the mirage had somehow been the doing of Professor Sherlamp. And if that was the case, she must have lured the George Parr to this area of space. The question was why. There are a few moments of cold silence, of confusion. Duval. Vanished? Calm. It's gone, sir. We are, however, detecting a vessel entering the theater from 7.30 p.m. It is flying the colors of the 3rd Fleet Scouting Division. It is the Demophilon John. The Demophilon John? Gwen! She had come! Duval. What is a scouting ship doing out here? You checked the flight ways for traffic, yes? The comm. Aye. Nevertheless, she is here and she is sounding counsel. Her captain wishes to come aboard. Duval. Is she flying an admiral? Calm. No, sir. Another short pause. Duval. We shall respond to her hails. Allow her to come in. We shall then loiter to her rear, and when in position, we shall open fire and take out her engines and mast. Then, her crew shall be primed for our taking. 
will not have a Zaffin chip, a League chip will do. And out here, nobody will be the wiser. We're soon to quit the League until we return as destroyers. Gwen, she'll be killed. Duval, please inform me when the ship is in position. Easy now. Patience. We're all friends here. Tom. Aye, sir. She's coming in now. Stenabel sucked in her breath and grit her teeth. It's a trap, Gwen. Calm. The scouting ship is in our forward firing envelope. Duval stayed silent. On came Rem Deckard's voice. Deckard, mark bearings and fire. The ship shuddered and the weapons uncoiled. Gwen! Deckard, damage report. Calm. Miss! The scouting ship deployed its maneuvering canards and turned away. The scouting ship just turned us to broadside in his opening fire. The ship trembled and yawed a bit. Stenabel could feel it. It was being pounded by weapons fire. Deckard, return fire! Disable that ship! Calm! Our targeting scanners have been knocked out. Deckard, for creation's sake, then aim manually. Calm. Captain, a pair of Marine Ballista Class Cutter Ships of the 13th Stellar Operations Division have appeared off our baffles. They are coming in fast. We're going to be boarded. Stenabel was overjoyed. Gwendolyn had come, and she had brought the Marines with her. Another pause. Duval came back on. Duval. For the love of creation, send to fleet. Advise we are under attack and under board by fleet assets and demand intervention. Swing around and get us out of here. Flanking speed. The ship was rocked by another devastating hit. Calm. Captain, the Marines have disabled our aft thermal plant and we can no longer achieve stellar mock. We are about to be boarded. Duval. Advise fleet we are under board and have sustained casualties. We are returning fire. We must appear to be the wounded party here. Then tell Lieutenant Deckard. Duval, Lieutenant, get to the hold and incinerate the crew under stasis. I want no trace left. Calm, redact these logs. Our voyage to camera will have to wait. Until then, we are simply an innocent ship on patrol, attacked, fired upon and boarded without provocation, and that's what I shall argue before the fleet. Deckard was coming to kill what was left of the crew. Once again, her conscience got the better of her. Stenabel could not allow that. She pulled the Unimine and went to Melazar. Melazar looked up at her with confused, lion-like eyes. You stay here. You'll be safe. I'll be back for you. Don't move. Melazar stood, teetering a little. Don't move. Stenabel hugged her and departed, crawling back into the vent. Faded, Stenabel headed for the rear hold. Just hours before, she reasoned she couldn't stand over the bulk of the crew, but now she would have to. She was determined to protect the crew from Deckard, to delay her, to interdict her. Right now, Duval was busy rewriting the ship's logs, making himself appear to be the wounded party. The crew was the proof of Duval's misconduct, and they had to be protected. All around, the ship throbbed and hummed with activity. Weapons discharged and reloaded. Incoming hits were taken. The ship banked hard. Groups of K-listers moved about, getting into position. She watched them stow weapons into hidden drawers. There was a massive crash, and Stenabel was nearly taken off her feet. Boarded! One of the K-listers mumbled amongst themselves. Creation, we're boarded! Others listened to portable comms. What should we do? The Marines have breached forward deck four. The captain says no hostile action. Surrender to them. Why? So he can argue himself out of a jam before his own in the Admiralty and leave us to twist in the wind? Fuck that, another said. What about us? I'll have a scent to the stockade on Ogilvy regardless. I say we fight and take a rip car off the ship. We'll have the drop on them. Senabelle crawled out of the corridor. She heard the sounds of shouting and boots clomping about on the decks above. Soon, a company of armed marines appeared, resplendent in their red uniforms. Uh, uh, we give up. 
the K-listers said. They raised their hands in apparent surrender, while others in the back rows reached for their hidden weapons. Faded, Stanabel took great pleasure in ratting them out. Marines! Marines! They're armed! she cried. The K-listers whirled about in a panic, looking for who spoke. They dove into any bit of cover they could find. Weapons came out. The Marines did likewise, and a full-fledged gun battle took place, with two sides exchanging noisy SK and mixed caliber fire, flecked with the distressed crawls of people in pain, people crying for backup, people shouting oaths and other curses. Stenabel dove out of the corridor. She heard pockets of gunfire erupt all over the ship. The George Bar had devolved into a desperate battleground. She felt confident the Marines, precision trained and well armed, would triumph in short order and locate Melazar, taking her safely into custody. That was the best case scenario for her. She was also confident that Captain Duval and Rodrigo Bergen would soon be in Marine custody. She only wished she could be there to see it happen and laugh at them. Now, time to preserve the evidence of his atrocities so that there would be little chance he could somehow talk his way out of this. Time to save the crew. And with that, we conclude Chapter 12, Ambush. Very short chapter, like I mentioned. So Stenabel manages to get off at Deck 2 with... Melazar and hides in the ship's tailoring office. Stella Bell being drugged and rather insensate. It's a little rough to hard to handle. Also, she's so huge and so heavy. Makes it a little difficult. Stella Bell hacks into the comm node with the Unimind and hears the ship's communications back and forth. The ship realizes that the that the image they had been chasing of the Zaff and Mercy 2 ship was just a mirage and that it, it vanished right off her scope since Stenabel suspects that was the doing of Hannah Ben Sherlamp and she's probably correct. The Dalafalon John shows up Gwen's ship and they decide since they were out in the middle of nowhere it's just the two of them they're gonna take down Gwen's ship and do to her crew what they already have done to their crew. However Gwendolyn brought the Marines with her and coming out of their baffles out the behind the ship or two Marine cutter class vessels they rammed the ship basically piercing it with like a beak and then started boarding that's how the Marines board ships they they just ram the ship make a hole and come on in lots of gun battles start erupting across the ship Stenabel hears Duval starting to prepare his defense. He's redacting ship's logs. He's trying to get rid of the evidence of his misdoings. It's going to claim to be the innocent victim in all of this. And knowing how smooth talkers can operate, sometimes he might have a good chance of success. And she realizes she needs to get down to the hold and stand over the crew to protect them from Rem Deckard, who has been sent to incinerate them. And that's where we currently stand. Next week, chapter 13, as we hem to the end of this book, this chapter, Rem Deckard, where Stenabel and Rem Deckard are ready to confront each other, see who comes out victorious, the evil Rem Deckard, spoiling to incinerate the crew, or Stenabel trying to save them. Until then... This is Ren Presents. I am your host, Ren. Peace out.